Chapter 15 Tempting the Church Liberal Catholicism promises Catholics that if only they would adopt their religion, they could convert the world. That is a vain illusion with which the devil down the ages has repeatedly tempted the church, as he tempted Christ in the desert. I will make you rich and popular. I will give you all the kingdoms of the world. Only you must fall down and adore me. It is true that liberalism proclaims the contrary. The light will shine all the brighter, it says, and only then will it pierce the darkness. As soon as we become more subtle Catholics, modified Catholics, in a word, new Catholics, we will immediately convert the world. Here, liberal Catholics wax eloquent. This illusion consoles their mind when their heart quails. They cherish it, and their eloquence on its behalf reveals how violently, like Esau, they desire a mess of pottage. Unfortunately, their attractive vision of the future, conquest that religion will make with the help of the liberal spirit, is spoiled when we recall a passage from Scripture that is difficult to forget. At the beginning of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the tempter approaches Jesus, who has withdrawn into the desert, and when he sees that hunger is tormenting him, he says, Command these stones to turn into bread. Jesus replies to him, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the tempter transports him to the highest point of the temple and says to him, if you are the Son of God, cast yourself down, for it is written that the angels have charge over you, and will bear you up upon their hands so that you not dash your foot against the stone. Jesus replies to him, It is also written, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. The tempter makes one final attempt and gives away his secret. He transports the Savior to a high mountain, and by magic makes him see from there all the kingdoms of the world in all their glory. I will give you all this, he says, if, bowing down, you will adore me. Jesus replies, Be gone! It is written, You will adore the Lord your God, and him alone you will serve. Satan withdrew, and at once angels approached and ministered to Jesus. Liberalism renews this scene. The church is poor. She is hungry. If the church would only be liberal, she would be rich, and stones would change into bread. But the hunger that torments the church, like that which tormented Jesus, is the hunger of charity. The church hungers to nourish souls that are languishing. The bread she wishes to distribute to them, the bread that will make them strong, is the word coming from the mouth of God, the truth. Liberalism says to her, If you are of God, if you have the word of God, you risk nothing in leaving the highest point of the temple. Throw yourself down, Go out to the multitude which no longer comes to you. Remove anything in you that displeases them. Speak to them the words they love to hear, and you will win them back, for God is with you. But the words that the multitude loves to hear are not the words coming from the mouth of God, and it is always forbidden to tempt the Lord. Finally, Liberalism pronounces its last word. I possess the world, and I will give it to you. But always on the same condition. See Cadence adoraveris me. Come down, fall down, bow down in equality with those who have no God, and follow the respectable people, and whose charge I will give you, 
after they have sworn an oath never to cross the threshold of a place of prayer. Then you will see how the world will honor you, and will listen to you, and how Jerusalem will be born again, more beautiful. The king of nothingness, said St. Gregory the Seventh, makes all kinds of promises. Thus secular leaders, who are not even sure of living until nightfall, dare to address the vicar of Christ, saying to him, We will give you power, honor, and every good thing, if you recognize our supremacy, and if you make us into your God, if, falling at our feet, you adore us. How many times this seduction has been tried! Frederick of Germany promised great advances of the faith to the popes he persecuted. Cavour thought he could fool Pius IX with this same mirage. The Parliament of Florence, freely insulting and plundering, employs the same language, mixing mockery with stupidity. Translator's Note Frederick II king of England and holy Roman emperor from 1194 to 1250, was excommunicated several times. He was frequently engaged in compromise with the papacy when he was not intriguing against it. Count Camille Bensi de Cavour, who lived from 1810 to 1861, helped forge the kingdom of Italy under the house of Savoy and King Victor Emmanuel and was its first prime minister. He sought a united Italy, entirely independent of the Pope. Through diplomacy and intrigue, the Parliament of Florence was the governing body of the new kingdom, since Florence was the capital of Italy during the 1860s. Anti-Catholic sentiment reigned at the parliamentary sessions, and the members had their triumph with the capture of Rome and the seizure of the Papal States in 1870. End translator's note. They always come up with the same conditions. Leave the camp of Israel. Get off the sterile rock of Rome. Close your ear to the monotony of the Holy Ark of the Covenant, always making the same old pronouncements. In short, fall down, Adore the liar and believe him alone.